Ladies and gentlemen, in a few moments, we will ask you to please silence all mobile devices and rise for the arrival of the official party. Military personnel, please cover. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Commander John Fay, Master of Ceremonies, and we will welcome you to the Blue Angels Change of Command Ceremony. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to recognize the admirals, generals, commanding officers, executive officers, former Blue Angel bosses, the Kesselring and Armitas families, and honored guests. 
Thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to share in the celebration of the Blue Angels' change of command. Adjutant, call the squadron to attention. Will the guests please rise for the arrival of the official party and please remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and the invocation. Commander, United States Navy, arriving. Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, arriving. Chief of Naval Air Training, arriving. Naval Air Forces arriving. Color Guard, parade the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem performed by Navy Band Southeast. Color Guard, retire the colors.
Chaplain Lieutenant Commander Daniel Clark will now offer the invocation. Military guests, please uncover and remain so for the remarks. Let us pray. Gracious and mighty God, as we gather here this afternoon to witness the change of the Blue Angels Command from Captain Kessel Ring to Commander Armatas, we pause and we realize that all authority ultimately comes from you. So therefore, we give you thanks for the faithful leadership that has been provided as the captain has skillfully and faithfully piloted this unique squadron through both great accomplishments as well as times that try the very soul of man. Lord, we realize that leadership like Captain Kessel Rings would not have been possible without the foundation of support his family provided for him. Therefore, we ask your blessings now upon his wife, Ashley, and daughters, Isla and Remy. And as they turn the page to a new and exciting chapter in their lives, we pray that you would bless them. And now, Lord, may the transition be smooth. May their strength and leadership be celebrated. And may they always be able to look back at these days with pride. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Side boys post. Will the guests please be seated? Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Brian Kesselring. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce Vice Admiral Weitzel, our Chief of Air, Naval Air Forces. Vice Admiral uh, Weitzel is a native of Stewart's Draft, Virginia, a graduate of Old Dominion. He's received his commission from Aviation Officer Candidate School in February of 1985 his aviation, Naval Aviation Wings of Gold in October of 1986, and most impressively, he did that at the age of 15 and 16 years old. He is a graduate of uh, Joint Forces Staff College at Naval War College with a Master's of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies. Vice Admiral's operational start assi assignments start in the Venerable F-14 Tomcat to include fighter squadrons VF-142, VF-101, VF-74, and VF-32. Along the way, he graduated from Top Gun in the latter part of his career he transitioned to the F-18 Super Hornet, where he served as executive officer as F VFA-122 and the commanding officer of VFA-41. He was commanded at sea and led for multiple times in addition to his tour at VFA-41. He commanded Carrier Air Wing 1 and Carrier Strike Group 2. He was deployed upon aircraft carriers USS Saratoga, the Theodore Roosevelt, the Nimitz, the Enterprise, and George H.W. Bush. Vice Admiral Weitzel has no shortage of sea time defending our nation. Air Boss has led in critical tours as a strategic action officer for National Military Command Center at Joint Chiefs of Staff, Washington, D.C., and filled critical billets at Naval, Naval Personnel Command in Millington, Tennessee. He has led overseas as battle director the Combined Air and Space Operations Center at al Udeed Air Base in Qatar, and Chief of Staff and Director Maritime Operations Center Commander, U.S. Navy Central Command Commander, Fit Fluke. As a flag officer, he has served as an assignment officer for Naval Personnel Command, PERS-4, and most recently, as Deputy Commander, U.S. PAC Fleet in July 2019. Vice Admiral Weitzel has become Naval Aviation's ninth Air Boss on October 2nd, 2022, in charge of all Navy, all aircraft in the United States Navy. Vice Admiral Weitzel has flown missions in Operation Desert Storm, Southern Watch, Deliberate Guard, Allied Force, Iraqi Freedom, and Inherent Resolve, and accumulated over 4,000 hours and over 1,000 carrier arrested landings. His personal decorations are numerous, to include the Defense Meritorious Service Medal, Meritorious Service Medal with two awards, Legion of Merit, five awards, Air Medal, and various unit and campaign and individual awards. Air Boss is a leader who has truly been an inspiration to watch and be led by over your last two years. Your safety initiatives across Naval Aviation have forced our Navy team to not accept anything less than the very best from our Naval forces. We are a more combat capable force due to your sage leadership. Our team could have received no better support through the tumultuous pandemic and dual aircraft transition in the last two air show seasons. And it is the highest honor of the Blue Angels to have you here to attend our team's end of season and change of command ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Weitzel. Oh, 
Okay, thank goodness Melody's not here because she's going to count the number of moves that have been there. She'll leave me in a microsecond if she hears that recounted again for all those moves that we've done. My mother-in-law will probably finally believe that her daughter married somebody that was halfway successful. Uh, and maybe Melody will let me start using Grecian so that I don't look so old and all those tears come together for this. Gee, thanks for uh, that truly was a kind invitation. They get longer and longer as I get older and older. So I, this is a... Uh, it was pretty, uh, I appreciate you going through that litany. This is, uh, this is truly the, the great uh, end uh, to my calendar year here is to be able to come down and talk to you guys in, uh, in Pensacola. It is, a, it is truly a, a great honor to do this. Uh, but before I get started, uh, how about a round of applause for the great air show that we had over the last two days? The team performed uh, incredibly, and this was a great way to cap off a successful as well as a historic season. I am extremely honored and happy to be here today. Uh, thanks, boss, for extending me this invitation a couple months ago. I'd like to extend a special welcome uh, to my friend, uh, Snap Brophy and Tara. Uh, I'm glad to have you on the uh, Sinatra team. Tara, I saw you walk in. There you are. Uh, good talking to you guys last night. Uh, the Shishadis, uh, CEO of the base, I tell you what, it was absolutely impressive last night standing there yesterday, coming in from the red eye from California, stuck on the bridge, traffic, seeing all the traffic coming on base, seeing all the people that were on base, and opening the base back up. You did a phenomenal job, and 200 and how many thousand? 200 plus thousand on the base yesterday. Phenomenal job by the base and security. <laughs> That's the way, to, that's the way to, to thank the Pensacola crowd. I appreciate uh, you doing that. Uh, Elwood, uh, last night, that was impressive. I don't get invited to, obviously, I don't get invited to a whole lot of those. Uh, that was impressive last night. You did a phenomenal job. You remember, you and I were back in an air wing uh, together. Uh, luckily, I'm still better looking than you. Uh, but I appreciate, uh, I appreciate those. And, uh, it, some great comments uh, last night. It was amazing listening to your leadership on uh, that. I'd also like to thank all the Pensacola community leaders as well as the civic organizations and sponsors uh, that truly have showed up not only today but throughout this year and throughout Boss Kesselring's uh, tour to give the Blues the support that they need. And I know that both uh, Sandy and Ashley have, uh, have benefited from you guys' uh, support, so thank you very much. It is amazing to come here today, especially in this historic museum. This is truly a national treasure uh, for our country as well as for naval aviation, uh, truly world class. It's a shrine to naval aviation, our history, and it provides us a connection with our heritage. As we sit here underneath the A-4 Skyhawks, still flying in the Blue Angels trademark uh, diamond formation, we're reminded that since 1946, the Blue Angels have flown with the highest degree of precision for more than 450 million spectators worldwide. Their flight demonstrations showcase the professionalism, excellence, and teamwork found in all Navy and Marine Corps units while providing the thrill and magic of flight, inspiring audiences and offering a glimpse to us all into the possibility of being greater than oneself. It's easy to understand why young girls and boys look on with awe at the Blue Angels during a show. Their relentless, positive attitude, strong work ethic, and dedication to the mission shows everything that they do and everything that we can do. The pride they display when they don their blue flight suit and navy blue maintenance artisan suits demonstrates our Navy's core values of honor, courage, and commitment in everything that they do, be it endless autograph lines to meticulously maintaining spectacular aircraft, and by executing their brilliant flight demonstration with absolute precision and excellence. Theirs is a visual demonstration and reminder that every worthwhile action comes from some man or woman daring what others fear to attempt. What they do isn't easy. Ask any team member here. They plan, brief, 
execute and debrief everything with unrelenting scrutiny. Every detail matters. Speaking of details, there's another nod to our aviation history. On this exact day, 42 years ago, at Naval Air Station Lemoore, the Navy established its first F-A-18 Hornet Squadron, the Rough Raiders of VFA-125. Are there any Rough Raiders in the crowd tonight? No? I got one. Charlie guy? Had a baby. It was the dawn of a new era for us. While the Hornet, uh, oh, this is my guy's picture. While the Hornet didn't uh, didn't match up so much with the Tomcat. Oh, boy. That's right there. Uh, at least Tom Cruise thought the first movie around. It more than made up for itself uh, with maneuverability uh, and advanced technology as well as the mission, munch, mission uh, function capabilities that it had. It was clearly the future of carrier aviation. It was also the future of the blues, as in 1986, a squadron of Hornets made their way here to NAS Pensacola, where they re received a blue and gold makeover and were adopted into the Blue Angel inventory. The Blues dazzled spectators in the Hornet for 34 years through 2020, when the team here today, under G's expert leadership, ushered in the F-A-18 Super Hornet and the C-130J Hercules, better known as Fat Albert. As we all saw in the shows over the last couple days, uh, they did an absolute phenomenal job. Interesting listening to G talk about the crew of Fat Albert getting their training in, uh, in England uh, last night. I copied the, uh, they were studying all the time. No gin drinks, no, uh, they did phenomenal in their transition. So uh, I would have uh, loved to have the, the arduous ability to transition in a foreign country to an airplane. And as many of you guys know, this year brought us yet another momentous milestone in naval aviation history. As 2022 marks the centennial year of our naval aircraft carriers. As it was a little over 100 years ago, on March 20th, 1922, that a famous collier ship, the USS Jupiter, was recommissioned as the United States Navy's first aircraft carrier, the USS Langley CV-1. CV in the century since, aircraft carriers and their embarked air wings have been the centerpiece of our U.S. maritime strategy, serving the nation's interest in times of war and peace, providing unequaled warfighting capabilities across the full spectrum of warfare, while also demonstrating the ability to adapt and evolve in an ever-changing global security environment, which was demonstrated by Harry S. Truman and Beetle Duff just getting back after serving and chopping into NATO's chain of command over in the Mediterranean. On my side of the coast, I had Carl Vinson and Abraham Lincoln strike groups deploy with our first instantiation of Air Wing of the Future featuring the F-35 Charlie Strike Fighter, CMV-22 Osprey, E-2D Delta Advanced Hawkeye, and the EA-18 Growler. And of course, the workhorse of the Navy, the F-A-18 Super Hornet. The precision flying demonstrated by the Blues yesterday is also a demonstration of the precision and power that our carrier air wings bring to the fight around the world, delivering historic victories. Those great victories of the United States have pivoted on the acts of courage and intelligence of a very few individuals. It is said that the man who is willing to fight for his country is finally the full custodian of its security. In tumultuous and uncertain times like these, a great leader is required to inspire and shape the force. And that is exactly what this team has with Captain Brian G. Kesselring. Leading the squadron from the number one jet, I've had the distinct privilege of getting to know G during his time as boss. G's leadership was instrumental in executing execution of the safe and effective transition from the Hornet to the Super Hornet and the C-130 Tango to the C-130 Juliet. He not only built his team on two new platforms, he re-annually rebuilt the demonstration team as experienced members departed for duty back to the fleet and new members arrived for training. Amazing. Let me be clear with you. The precision of this team doesn't start that way when they begin their season. The squadron spends January through March training, obviously at Naval Air Facility El Centro, 
as you led them through countless hours of relentless and meticulous training as the team built skill and trust and confidence in each other. Boss G understands the challenges of human nature, even within the Naval Aviation Flight Demonstration Squadron. Whether in the workshop, office, or society, the majority seek lives of minimum risk and expenditure of effort when we look at Americans, plagued by doubts of themselves and by fears of their personal securities, but not under G's leadership. Under G, a minority of men and women carry the load of work and accept the risks and responsibilities which attach to progress and accomplish greatness. And this Blue Angel team here today did just that. They brought those incredible aircraft to life, the sailors and Marines who support and maintain these incredible, incredible aircraft did what they do best. They put the life, the Blue Angels magic in them. And even with the 2020 show season canceled due to COVID-19, the team brought the magic across the country as they paired with the Air Force's Thunderbird, Thunderbirds in America Strong, tribute to COVID-19 health care workers, first responders, military and other essential personnel while standing in solidarity with all Americans during the pandemic. That is what this team is all about to me. Teamwork, dedication, excellence on the ground and in the sky. When they don the blue flight suit and climb in those aircraft, they do it to represent their fellow sailors and Marines deployed around the world, many times in contested environments. And for many who have made the ultimate sacrifice even more, the Blue Angels have inspired countless men and women throughout their 76 years, demonstrating to people of all ages from all walks of life what can be achieved if we come together and work as a team. From leading this team to seamlessly incorporating two new aircraft, inspiring healthcare workers during the pandemic, surviving a direct hit from Hurricane Sally, G is truly an exceptional leader. I have admired his humble team first approach his commitment to the mission, and his passion for his people, their families, and the Blue Angel mission. And he's one hell of a demonstration pilot. As G heads back to the fleet to be DCAG for our forward deployed carrier air wing, CAG-5, next summer, I know G and Ashley will take their passion, as well as the culture of excellence that the Blue Angels live by with them to Japan. Congrats, Ashley. Scribe, you've got big shoes to fill. But your track record as an aviator and as a proven leader is well known and speaks volumes for what type of leader I expect you to be. I know that you and Sandy are the right team for this job. And I look forward to watching you accomplish great things as Blue Angel number one, team Blue Angel number one. For the remainder of the team who are up uh, in the back row there, know that you are the heart and soul of the Blue Angel team. You support these aviators and their aircraft with equal parts skill and passion, and you all look damn good doing it. Let's give the entire Blue Angels team another round of applause. In closing, it's truly an honor and a privilege to be here today. I want to thank everybody that came out today to support G, support Scribe, and support the team. Congratulations to both the families for the great leadership that you guys uh, demonstrated and are going to demonstrate. And to everyone on the, that's here that's on the team today, as you look ahead for next year's show season, I know that the spotlight can be hot, but I also know you'll continue to represent us well, us, Naval Aviation, U.S. Navy, United States Marine Corps. God bless uh, our Navy. God bless our country. God bless naval aviation. And truly, God bless the Navy Flight Demonstration Team. Fly Navy, fly Marines. Thank you. Admiral Brophy will now present Captain Kesselring with his award. Will the guests and military guests please remain seated and uncovered for the presentation of the award. Adjutant, call the squadron to attention.
The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Legion of Merit to Captain Brian C. Kesselring, United States Navy, for service as set forth in the following. For exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service as Commanding Officer of the Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron from August 2019 to November 2022. Captain Kesselring represented more than 800,000 fighting men and women of the United States Navy and Marine Corps, leading the nation's premier flight demonstration squadron. He led two highly successful air show seasons, completing more than 134 air shows at 64 sites across the country and in Canada. As the flight leader, he directed the effective planning, coordination, and successful execution of the Salute to America flyovers of Mount Rushmore in the District of Columbia. He was the cornerstone in the execution of the 18-city joint flyover with the United States Air Force Thunderbirds, recognizing frontline healthcare workers during the early stages of the pandemic in support of Operation America Strong. Additionally, he oversaw the transfer of 14 FA 18A through D legacy Hornets and more than $1.2 million in assets and the acceptance of a C-130J and 16 FA 18 E and F variants. His legacy will endure by leading a significant strategic overhaul, refining the command mission while creating unique initiatives enable the Blue Angels to evolve, modernize, and become a more relevant tool for the Chief of Naval Operations for decades to come. By his superior leadership, commendable innovation, and inspiring dedication to duty, reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, Kay Weitzel, Vice Admiral, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Air Forces, U.S. Pacific Fleet. Squadron, please be seated. Command Master Chief McDermott and Logistics Specialist Senior Chief Amber Gibson will now present a gift to Captain Kesselring from the Blue Angels Chief's Mess. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Brian Kesselring, Commanding Officer, Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron. Thank you. June 21st, 1986, six blue and gold A4F Skyhawk twos thundered down the runway and took to the skies over my hometown in Fargo, North Dakota. In the crowd that summer day, with his family stood a nine-year-old boy. 36 years, four months, 24 days later, that same kid, Lisa Hart, flew his final air show in the Blue Angels. Today, I stand equally awestruck, inspired, and proud of the 76-year Blue Angels legacy that I've been so blessed to have the opportunity to be part of for the last three years and to continue to be inspired by as part of this world-class team. What a ride. And thank you to all those who have supported me throughout my life, my career, and this Blue Angels tour. And many of us have heroes, few though are blessed as I am to have been raised by them. Mom and Dad, thanks for never giving up on me, even when I gave you plenty of reasons to do so. Uh, and always providing me with a guiding light throughout my life. To my father and mother-in-law, Larry and Carla, thank you for your unbelievable support and always being here to help and support our family as we navigated these hectic last few years. Our family, Isla, Remy, most of all, are better for it. Jerry, Donna, Nola, Kate, Elisa, thank you for making the trip to join us on this occasion here in Pensacola. That means a lot. Of course, I won the lottery when I met my wife, Ashley. Over the last six years of workups, deployments, then this tour, in that six years, I've been away for over half of it. And there is no doubt you have the most difficult job in our household. You're not only a phenomenal wife, a fantastic soon-to-be mother of three, uh, but you serve as an active-duty Marine Corps officer and also hold perhaps the most difficult job in the, in the Navy and Marine Corps, being a supportive su spouse of a service member. Of course, our family doesn't have a monopoly on sacrifice for our country. In fact, uh, like all of the Navy and Marine Corps and military spouses in the audience, 
current or former, to please rise along with Ashley so we can recognize for you and your service to country and your silent dedication to your servicemen and women. Ashley, you are my inspiration, my rock, and I'm so blessed to have you in my life. You're the embodiment of what the Blue Angels are all about, and I love you. And the award I just received shouldn't be really be worn by me at all. It should be worn jointly by my family and that team right behind you. But since we can't all wear it, Isla, if you could come on up. Uh, for Daddy, I got something for you, and I'll let you wear it for all of us, okay? The Blue Angels don't execute their mission alone. The support of this base, starting with Lucky Kinsilla and now Captain Village Shashity, and this team is first rate. Thank you. We went through some tough times, and we're getting better. And the last two days is a darn good start, right? Likewise, the support of the greater Pensacola community is second to none. 22 years ago, when I reported OCS, the Pensacola community opened me with welcome arms, just as it does all the Navy and Marine Corps sailors and Marines that come here each and every year. And we have a unique relationship with the Blue Angels, and it's something that uh, I'll be uh, sad to leave. Additionally, we've got Admiral Kozad with the Found Museum Foundation, Cag Gilliam, all the selfless volunteers who work here in this museum and this amazing facility. It still inspires me. Each time I walk into this wonderful museum that pays homage to naval aviation past, present, and future. So thank you. And the Blue Angels, each of our each of our sailors and Marines go through a life-changing crucible to earn the right to wear the coveted Blue Angels crest. One small part of that crucible is a short speech that each future teammate shares with the team shortly after their arrival. We call the speech the Nitty Brown, who in case you didn't know it, is the Blue Angels' biggest fan, which is a fact. One common refrain uh, in those speeches is that nobody on this team earn their opportunity to be here on their own. We all received a lot of support, uh, no different. In addition, in addition to a wonderful supportive family, teachers, and coaches that helped raise me, I was also blessed throughout my naval career by being surrounded by naval officers who have demonstrated to me what it is to be a leader, a naval aviator, a war fighter, as well as how to be a Navy husband, a Navy father time, and the sometimes uncertain and tumultuous schedule that defines naval aviation in service to country. Many are here today, and I look forward to thank you all in, in person throughout the day. Air Boss, Admiral Brophy, thank you for your leadership in allowing the Blue Angels to stay 100% mission focused without distraction. Even the most challenging times, I cannot adequately express how much I appreciate your support during this entire tour, even till the end, and how inspired I am by the example of your servant leadership you demonstrate each day for the greater good of our country. The longer I've been on this team, the more honored I am to represent the most powerful and successful Navy and Marine Corps the world has ever known. The 2022 Blue Angels are an amazing team that represent an even more amazing team, our Navy, our Marine Corps. Our team was created when Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz recognized in the, world, the waning days of World War II that when the headlines of all the great victories that his naval forces were achieving across the globe went away, there would be a natural tendency for the American public to forget to forget about those Navy and Marine Corps personnel who helped win that war, and those that continue to protect our fine nation and sacrifice for its safety and our ideals. The very nature of a strong and successful naval force is one that is fully deployed, and many times out of sight of the American public. So on April 24, 1946, with a stroke of his pen, he created the Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, the Blue Angels, which today represent over 800,000 active duty, reserve, and civilian support personnel, many of which are deployed all over the world right now. Sailors and Marines at this very moment are manning flight decks, navigating dangerous waters, flying night carry landings in adverse conditions, and are in foreign lands far away from home. 
Some engaged in combat operations in order to protect the freedoms of the citizens of the greatest country in the world. As in 1946, today, the Blue Angels represents our brothers and sisters in arms and every Navy and Marine Corps member who has ever served. We are the Navy and Marine Corps team. We are America's team. Ultimately, the time-honored tradition of the change of command is about the squadron and its personnel. Specifically, today's marks the official change of command for the Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron. A squadron is a basic unit in naval aviation of how we organize ourselves. To qualify as a squadron, you must simply have aircraft, personnel, directives, and a mission. The Navy can create a squadron by just putting these comp the components together, and there you have it, a squadron. A team, though, is something different. In the case of the Blue Angels, it is very different. A team is everything a squadron is, but more so. A higher form of evolution of a squadron. A Blue Angels team requires world-class personnel who through perseverance, hard work, sacrifice, and selflessness can create a team where words like trust, camaraderie, dedication, and initiative take on a depth of meaning few organizations will ever know. Where extraordinary levels of excellence are achieved in its members, and its, in its members are inculcated with an ethos built towards critical self-assessment and self-sacrifice. What some call a team on the Blue Angels, others might call a second family. Our Blue Angels family, I've been blessed with a third year, and the most wonderful thing about that third year is not the flying of jets all across America, but rather that I have the unique opportunity to depart the team with the same newbie brothers and sisters who I arrived with back in 2019. This day is very much a day for them. And to celebrate our last three years together at this time, I'd like to bring forward all departing team members to the front. Departing uh, Blue Angel team members, please come forward. fine world-class group of sailors and Marines. I am honored to share the stage with you. Additionally, one of the final honors I have this tour is recognizing the three teammates who have demonstrated our Navy and Marine Corps core values and the Blue Angels ethos at the highest level throughout 2022. At this time, I'd like to take the time to recognize our Marine of the Year, our Junior Sailor of the Year, and our Sailor of the Year. So when called upon, please come forward up to the stage here. Our Marine of the Year, Sergeant Guillermo Hernandez Jimenez. Our Junior Sailor of the Year, Logistics Specialist, second class, Brian Hubbard. And our Sailor of the Year. Aviation Instructional Mechanic, First Class, and Crew Chief Alpha, Number One Alpha, Kevin Hill. The Blue Angel of the Year, Junior Blue Angel of the Year, and Marine of the Year awards recognize the sailor and Marines who best exemplify dedication to a culture of excellence and sustain superior performance in all assigned duties while serving with the Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron.
Take a good look at these young men and women assembled before you. They represent the very best of us. At first glance, they may just look like a squared away group of sailors and Marines in some sharp uniforms. They are much more than that. They come from all walks of life. Some immigrants, some come from the big city, small towns, the country, the poor, the middle class. They are from all across the United States, all across the world. They are us, America. They are different colors, different genders, have different beliefs, and at times, different opinions, don't they? They're all joined together by a common love of country and the Navy and Marine Corps. They are their brothers and sisters keepers. This group has done so many phenomenal things during their tenure, and I've been blessed to be able to serve alongside them and as their commanding officer. They transitioned transition the team to two new platforms, both the Super Hornet and Super, Her Super Hercules, simultaneously, no less. Executed a first time ever nation nationwide joint fiber mission with the Thunderbirds, Operation America Strong, and Operation Salute to America, honoring first responders, essential personnel, and medical professionals during the COVID-19 pandemic. When 2020 was canceled, they creatively found ways to practice up to seven times a week in the local area to ensure the Blue Angels' high bar performance and safety was not lost. In 2021 and 2022, they performed over 60 air shows and air show sites, executed joint training detachments, in 2022, we even decided to uh, raise the bar a notch and uh, embed an IMAX team. They wrote and rewrote our manuals, SOPs, directives, determined how to adjust and modify our show for these aircraft, all as they continue to hold the exceptionally high bar for performance that the Blue Angels historically have. I would argue that they have raised the bar, but we'll let the arc of history determine that for us. All while doing this, the Blue Angels family you see in front of you has endured much. A terrorist attack on our base, multiple hurricanes, a direct hit from Hurricane Sally, which forced many from their homes, a global pandemic, the loss of grandparents, aunts, uncles, parents, and even children. They've had marriages, separations, and personal challenges, and many family hardships. When a pilot was injured, they put forth the effort to train a replacement pilot and then he was healed. Lieutenant Commander Rickoff flew his last show with us and departs the team as he should with us, our Navy brothers. We started this tour together as shipmates and coworkers and ended after the crucible of our Blue Angels team, touring as a team and a family. For the last three years, I've had the opportunity to talk all around the country about what makes up the Blue Angels magic. I tell them it all starts with less than 1% of young men and women across the country who've decided to serve their country as part of the Navy and Marine Corps team and be part of something greater than themselves, like these fine folks in front of you here today. I make a point to tell them that our team is hand-selected from across the Navy and Marine Corps for espousing the key characteristics that are critical to our Blue Angels ethos. I tell them that our team is built on a foundation of trust. Trust is the very bedrock that we build our Blue Angel teams upon, where a simple handshake from crew chief to pilot, tells that avia the jet is set, safe, and ready to go. Without trust across all ranks, we will not succeed in ex executing our mission, let alone perform it safely. I tell folks across the country that our demonstration is the embodiment of the tireless pursuit of perfection, both on the ground and in the air. They're usually surprised when, I, when they hear that I rank talent among the least important traits in the Blue Angels. In fact, of the four traits that I believe would define our Blue Angels ethos, they are attitude, hard work ethic, initiative, and finally aptitude in descending order of importance. Attitude. In the Blue Angels, it takes folks who decide to be the best versions of themselves each and every day. It takes teammates who are imbued with relentless optimism and hope, and even on their darkest of days, choose to be glad to be here. Life on the Blues takes an unbreakable spirit that is committed to improving oneself and the team each day to truly being your brother's and sister's keeper. There are no shortcuts in the Blue Angels. As Boss Rude might say, it takes a good old North Dakota work ethic. I might also say that. As our team needs personnel who are dedicated to the mission and understand there are no such things as shortcuts when creating a world-class performance. 
Our team needs people who understand the pathway to success is often traversed through the most difficult terrain. Coupled with that work ethic, the Blue Angel must have folks who seize the initiative each day. Carpe diem. The personnel that, if anything, need the reins pulled back a little versus waiting for that opposite cr uh, command to get moving. Of course, there is no doubt that our team is filled with talented folks. Without trust, a Blue Angel's attitude, a work ethic, and initiative, all that talent is of little use. I know I've told you about many accomplishments of those sailors and Marines in front of you. I offer that our most important accomplishment was safely launching six jets in one C-130 on our last demo day, and then landing all of them back at Sherman Field, just as they have done every day for the last three years. Although it took a Herculean effort by all of our 2022 teammates to ensure this happened, our team and every other Blue Angels team is indebted to those teams that didn't. And more importantly, those Blue Angels families who lost loved ones flying for this team. The Blue Angels honor those losses by implementing ch all necessary changes to ensure a similar loss never happens again. Ladies and gentlemen, in your program, there is a page dedicated to the 28 young men lost too soon while flying for the Blues. Sons, fathers, husbands, forever remembered. We all owe them and their families a debt of gratitude for the 2022 team's success. Some of those teammates are in the crowd today, and many families of those lost are watching virtually from afar. And I ask that we all take a moment to recognize them as they have stood and shouldered the burden of their loss each day for us. Although we cannot fully comprehend their loss, we can support. And the 2022 team supports and thanks you. Our families, thank you. The Blue Angels all across the country, thank you. You are Blue Angels family. We do not forget. And we'll never forget your loss. Those fallen Blue Angels live on through the betterment of this team. Today, I leave the Blue Angels to go back to my dream job, the job that I was inspired to pursue over 34 years by a Blue Angel team and another North Dakota native. That dream being a fleet naval aviator to once again have the opportunity to take to the skies after being hurled by catapult from 100,000 tons of sovereign American steel territory and lead off of a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier. As I traded my blue flight suit for a Navy standard green one, I and the 2022 team pass on the baton of the Blue Angels legacy to Boss Armitas and the rest of the 2023 Blue Angels team. It is your legacy to continue, to hold even in the most difficult times, and to represent us, the Navy and Marine Corps, to the utmost of your ability. I'll be watching as from afar and as amazed as that nine-year-old boy who saw the Blue Angels show up in North Dakota years ago. As they stand on Naval Aviation's hallowed ground in Pensacola under the very same aircraft that inspired me years ago, I leave this team even more inspired. And I'm forever grateful for the opportunity to lead this team. Boss Armitas, you're the right officer, the right aviator, and the right leader to take command of this team. I have the utmost confidence in your ability, not only to carry on the Blue Angels legacy, but also to take the 2023 team to higher heights. This will no doubt be a formative tour for you in many ways, and it will also be one for Sandy, Lucas, Riley, Finley, and Little Jack. Ash and I will be there to support you in any way we can. From this moment forward, your name will join that list that spans 76 years. From Butch Voris, to Johnny Magda, to Harley Hall, to Gil Rude, to Greg Woolrich, all legends, all have put their fingerprint on this team, its legacy, and the Navy Marine Corps team writ large. No pressure, right? But remember, pressure is a privilege, and all have a distinct honor to serve on this team are truly a privileged few. Good luck. I, like the rest of the bosses who have preceded me, will be here for you and Sandy as you navigate this journey. But I probably won't answer my cell phone until after deer season. I'm just saying. And for the last time, alongside my newbie brothers and sisters here with me on stage, departing 2022 Blue Angels. Ready break.
Air Boss, Admiral Brophy, Boss Armitas, ladies and gentlemen, in the words of every Blue Angel that ever was, I'm glad to be here. I will now read my orders. Adjutant, call the squadron to attention. Bupers orders number 1862, when directed by reporting senior detached in November 2022 as commanding officer, Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, and report to Commander Carrier Air Wing 5. I will now read my orders. Bupers order number 1946, when directed by reporting senior, report in November 2022 to commanding officer, Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, for duty and a flying status involving flying as his relief. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Alex Armitas, Commanding Officer, Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron. Good afternoon, Admiral Weitzel, Admiral Brophy, distinguished guests. I'd like to start by echoing Boss Castlering's thank yous to Captain Shishadi and his NAS Pensacola team, and of course, Captain Gilliam and the staff here at the National Naval Aviation Museum for their support in enabling us to put on this awesome event. Chomps, I think Jack's long gone. Thank you as well to the Blue Angels Admin Department and other team members that have been working for the past several weeks and months to get every last detail in place for today. Also, let me extend a warm welcome to all the family members, friends, and colleagues traveling from near and far to join us today. And welcome to all the Blue Angels, past, present, and possibly future. First and most importantly, I'd like to say thank you to my wife, Sandy, for all of your love, endless patience, and support. I couldn't be more excited and thankful to have you with me as we start this next chapter in our Navy journey together. I love you. To my children, Lucas, Riley, Finley, and Jack, like your mom, you are intelligent, strong, and fiercely independent. I will forever be in awe of your perseverance and grateful for your patience as we prepare for this tour. I promise to do my very best to make the most of our time together to ensure we can enjoy this experience as a family. Mom, Gabe, Kelly, Linda, and Julie, thank you for making the trip, and thank you for always putting your family first. And Tom and Liz, it means a lot to me to have you here, and I'm excited to continue sharing this adventure with you in the years to come. Thank you for coming. Admiral Brophy, Proton, Domo, Trike, BDM, and the many others here I've been fortunate enough to serve with alongside over the years. Thank you for making the trip to be here today and thank you for your lessons and inspiration during our time together. To the Filardo family, we've managed to stay close over the course of our respective 20 plus year careers and after all this time, we get to be neighbors. Thank you for always being there for us. To the Duff family, thank you for coming. Deedle, I've been lucky to serve with you in three different squadrons. You've been an incredible mentor and I consider myself extremely fortunate to have had the opportunity to learn from you over the years. Along with that mentorship, we have been blessed to maintain a close relationship with your entire family for almost two decades now. Thank you. For the Garrison, Benton, Nelson, Cheney families, and other family, friends, and colleagues I failed to mention, thank you for being here, and thank you for the lasting positive impact you've made on our family over the years. I've been lucky to learn from all of you, and I can't thank you enough for taking the time to provide support and help when we needed it, which was often. To the former Blue Angels, honoraries, to the El Centro, Pensacola communities, and to all the Blue Angel families, thank you for coming today and for your unwavering support of this team. Boss Castle Ring, and of course, Ashley, Island Remy, thank you for everything. Once again, you have executed flawlessly in your time here and set this command up for continued success for many years to come. Thank you for your mentorship and guidance, both in the last few months and the last several years. Your talent, leadership, and reputation in the Naval Aviation community are second to none. You have set the bar for how this team should perform, and we will do everything in our power to maintain that gold standard. 
Thank you, and for the second time in my career, I'm lucky and truly honored to follow you into the squadron. I haven't been here long, but I've already figured out a few things about the Blue Angels. This command is unlike any other in the world, much less in the Navy. We have a few more aircraft than a fleet Super Hornet squadron, but fewer than half the maintainers. The events, public affairs, admin, Fat Albert medical teams are faced with constant challenges their fleet counterparts seldom encounter. The mission is unique. Mission success is tough to define and even more difficult to assess. What we do have in common with the fleet, however, is the people. Every sailor and Marine here came from the fleet. They are some of the most dedicated, passionate, and talented people you could ever hope to meet. I am humbled and honored to have the opportunity to earn my place on this team and will consider myself a success if I can one day be counted among them. It is these sailors and Marines that make this team what it is. As they have since 1946, the Blue Angels will continue to represent the very best of our nation, our Navy, and our Marine Corps because the squadron is built from the very best of our nation, our Navy, and our Marine Corps. Like every sailor, Marine, and boss that has gone before me, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Bosun, post the side boys. Will the guest please rise for the benediction? Chaplain Clark will deliver the benediction. Let's pray. Eternal Father, may you grant both wisdom and guidance upon Commander Armatus as he takes command of this outstanding squadron, knowing as Jesus said, to whom much is given, much is required. May his wife Sandy and his children, Lucas, Riley, Finley, and Jack, rally around him and support him throughout his tenure as he dedicates himself to the fulfillment of this amazing mission and the service of these people. And lastly, may we dedicate ourselves to support Commander Montes as we accomplish this mission together, knowing that the best of days are yet to come. For these things we ask in your precious and holy name. Will the guests remain standing? Military, military personnel, please cover. Adjutant, call the squadron to attention for the departure of the official party. Naval Air Forces departing. Chief of Naval Air Training, departing. Captain, United States Navy, departing. Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron departing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the change of command ceremony. Family and guests are invited to attend a reception on the museum's USS Cabot flight deck on the rear stage right for a cake cutting and refreshments with the Kessel Ring and Armitas families. Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, let's start training for the 2023 season. Blue Angels, ready break. 